Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Yerit. I uh, run a tiny startup called Open Sensors. Uh, we're one of the startups incubated in, in the Open Data Institute. Um, and we deal with, as the name suggests, sensor data. So we have uh, thousands of people and, and cities publishing and subscribing to sensor data. Uh, anyone that publishes real-time uh, open data uh, can use the system for free. Uh, so, data that we, we use on the open data side are things like uh, we get a lot of flooding data, uh, a lot of air quality data. We nearly have, um, I think I was doing the sums that by the summer we'll have kind of uh, European and North American coverage of air quality data. And these are from um, small little sensors that people, it's mostly private individuals, uh, are putting in, in their gardens, in their homes. And, and enabling others to, to share and, and to reuse it. Um, why not call us Twitter for Sensors? Well, that's kind of, um, it's, it's not really, but anyway, people understand what we do now, so never mind. Um, and, and this is the picture that kind of comes into my head when, when people talk about smart cities. It's kind of slightly kind of, um, there's, a lot of there's a lot of talk uh, 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 there's a lot of overselling, I feel, uh, around smart cities. And I, I think, from my perspective, what I'd like to see is more uh, bottom-up uh, smart cities, where, where people are actually engaged directly. Um, we're, we're going back to these massive, massive uh, 90s-style kind of enterprise uh, integration projects that cost millions and, and actually deliver less than uh, what small startups can do in, in, in uh, in, in small teams, and, and I would like to see less of this. I mean, I think we've learned that these kind of projects fail quite a lot, and they're quite risky. And also, I feel like in this day and age, uh, with the kind of the expenditures and, and the scales that we're talking about, it's actually unaffordable. And if we look at um, what the government digital services have done, actually around design principles, I, I, I want to I want to put that we should be maybe taking the lessons that they've already um, have shown work and, and implementing it towards smart cities. And one of it is uh, start with user data. And, and when we talk about smart city projects, actually nobody really thinks about people, citizens, right, on the ground. What do they need? Why? Why? Um, is a question. Um, the last, um, in, in, in one event we did, we kind of we were talking about European projects and, and what came out was that in all of the European sensor or, or smart cities projects, um, actually the citizen engagement, uh, uh, the, the no one's doing citizen engagement. And that's really interesting to me because the problems, these massive 18, uh, to 18 month to two year pro projects are defined before uh, anybody talks to, to people. Uh, do you need it? Um, do less is their second second uh, lesson from, from GDS and, and understanding where the kind of government uh, stops and, and hopefully an ecosystem of, of companies come in is, is a very important distinction. Like end-to-end -end services shouldn't necessarily be provided by, uh, by these government services. If you could allow um, the infrastructure to be laid down uh, then, then at least, at least, kind of other people can step in. And I think interesting uh, examples of this is, is Bristol is open. They're, they're putting in a lot of the the hardware, the fiber optics cables, the kind of the hardware side that necessarily other outsiders can't do. But they're 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 saying this is where we stop, and they're hoping uh, or encouraging an ecosystem to 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 kind of come in. <coughs> I won't go through all of this. One of the obviously the the last the last point is uh, make things open uh, is. Uh, not just the data, obviously the data being open is, is very, very important. Um, you know, for air quality data, uh, you know, the, it's, it's applicable to so many people. So people that are interested in the environment and obviously people that are, have uh, interested in the health implications, so individuals and, and kind of on a macro level. There's also another thing about the open side is, can we actually create reusable systems, uh, smart city systems? So if, if London or a borough in London pays for a huge smart cities project, can, can somebody else take it, improve it, uh, and make it better? Can we start thinking about smart cities infrastructure in a reusable way, in a composable way? Um, and, and again, we've done this really well, kind of GDS is on, is on GitHub. I mean, can we start designing these systems in, in, in a way that are reusable and other countries and, and cities can use them? Um, so 
I, I want to give you a tangible example of what we're dealing with, kind of to bring it back to Earth. We were dealing with uh, a hackathon for, for uh, Westminster um, around 18 months ago. And we, they were really keen um, for, for people to take their parking information and parking data and, and do some interesting things with it. But really, um, so that was great. We kind of said, oh, well, we'll host the data. Uh, where is it? And they were like, oh, well, I don't know. This other service provider, go talk to them. And um, I talked to seven different companies uh, in, in the kind of the chain of custody. So each company uh, was coming in, doing some e-tail, and passing it on. And Westminster themselves didn't have access to their own data. Um, we can get access. And it went through, so I, I live in East London, Westminster, it's obviously Westminster, uh, uh, West London. I wanted to, I was like, I, I will come and get the data from you. Uh, it took nearly two months to get data from the sensors, from parking sensors that Westminster had installed to, to, to us. And this is crazy. This is, this is doing everyone an injustice. And, um, so these are the types of problems as a startup I want to solve. I don't, I don't necessarily kind of, I don't know where center uh, deployments, I can't say for sure anyway, where, where, where this is all going. But there, there are real problems here uh, that can be solved with technology. And we've solved them in, in, in I suppose, the, the private space quite easily. Um, um, so, so this is what we want to do. We want to create a data commons uh, around real-time data. Uh, where, where data sets are already being published in real time and others, web services, people um, can, can subscribe to them and they, they take uh, the kind of fire hoses and, 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 and do interesting things and, and reuse them. Um, and we are, I mean, we're, we're seeing a lot of interesting projects that we never really kind of anticipated coming in. There are obviously like things around air quality and flooding, but also we're I, over the last week, I've been onboarding uh, people that are uh, monitoring the Fukushima region um, and all the radiation data. And that's, I mean, it, I never in my kind of wildest dreams did I think that this would happen uh, when we started a couple of years ago. And, and here we are. And I think uh, in the long term, um, I'd like to see more of these start, start kind of understanding how um, these deployments uh, will work. And, and I guess. Yeah, that's, that's my call to arms, if I say, like, let's, let's solve the problems of, of today. Um, one of the things that I would like to really emphasize on is, is things that we need to figure out is, if we're going to have smart cities projects with center deployments, who's actually going to maintain these centers? Um, these things are very cheap. Uh, usually they're under $100 or 100 pounds. Who's going to change them? There has to be some guy in a van that actually is going to have to change our connected streetlights, right? And we haven't, we don't talk about this kind of stuff. Day-to-day -day maintenance, infrastructure, and and can we make it ir iterable in a sense that, you know, with your, with your again, with, with, these, with these devices, they will... Uh, in two years' time, they need to be changed. So if you have a parking sensor dug into the ground, are you going to actually dig up <laughs> one of the roads? Like, how, um, what is the design um, and, and best practice like? And I, and I, and I find I, I kind of there's not enough talk about this. It's kind of, there's a lot of hand-wavy, hand waviness, but not necessarily practical. How are we going to fund this? There's a, um, a lot of the business models are, that I'm seeing anyway, are grant-based, so it's, it's more reliance on the TSP, but really long-term, how is this stuff going to be paid for? And, and whether it's startups or big companies, to, to enter this market uh, successfully, they need, to, they need to understand how they're going to make money. Um, and, and, and very clear ways to make money, not just on, we'll monetize the data, then it becomes creepy. Um, and, <laughs> and, and, and the last point is, we need to, we need to kind of, uh, close the loop between the different domains. Smart cities uh, involves yes. It's, if you're going to, um, you know, if, if you're going to digitize these cities, computer scientists are going to come in. But also, uh, we need to kind of have a common language between architects and city planners and 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 everyone, all the stakeholders involved, uh, in, in order to kind of define it better. Uh, so that's me. Uh, please come to our workshop uh, this afternoon. It'll be interesting. We'll have lots of hardware startups uh, showcasing. Uh, they're actually doing smart cities, like uh, projects that aren't. Uh, and the, you know, we, we, we want to kind of give you a hands-on understanding of what this stuff uh, involves.